This Saturday night, Orange County International Raceway in Coors presents 64 Funny Cars, America's favorite drag racing event. Three-time world champ Raymond Beetle in the Blue Mac. Four-time world champ and my favorite, Don the Snake Perdome and his sexy Pepsi Challenger. Billy Myers' new 7-Eleven Chief Auto Firebird. Oh, and that handsome Kenny Bernstein and his Budweiser King. The Hawaiian John Force. Cute little trip shoemaker and that darling Craig Epperly. And Jim Dunn, Alaska's Jim Moore, Mighty Mike Dencham. 64 Funny Cars presented by Coors Beer this Saturday night. Gates open at noon. Ground pounding starts at 7. The man says, you got to have respect for him, because like I say, he's the only one on the radio, and you tell your mother, you say, you listen at, at 10 o'clock, and 8 o'clock, and 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock, and he will come on, and he will mention my name, and your mother calls you and says, hey, he didn't mention your name. Okay, well, <laughs> he will. It's coming. He calls you up, and he says, okay, Forrest. He says, I, uh, you hit Seattle. He says, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you that big cash. I'm going to give you $800, roll in there, and put on a good show for the folks. And I said, yes, sir, I will. And, and you get up there, you, you stay on the road for three days, and and you ain't slept, and uh, your crew's all tired, and your girlfriend's mad at you, and you roll into town, and he gives you $800. That's a raise I got, and uh, that's 800 total. Rolled in there, slung a rod out of my motor, set my car on fire, walked out there and said, got to cut you 50 bucks for the grease sweep you put on the track. Can't even believe it. Yeah. out of Southern California has a multitude of sponsors. Derviner Schnitzel, Stop and Go Market, Mountain Dew, Jolly Rancher Candies. But John Force has become a force to be reckoned with. He is certainly one of the most competitive racers on the national event circuit today. His competition is Joe Pisano with Trip Shoemake at the wheel, a former Southern Nationals champion. Shoemake and Pisano teaming up for the 83 season. In fact, it was Trip Shoemake who won the event title here one year ago, driving the Team B car of Billy Meyer. That is Larry Frazier, who has made the difference, John Force will tell you, in his effort. Frazier has wrenched this car to over 250 miles an hour this season. Force can now concentrate on driving and not worry about making the horsepower because Frazier has plenty of it under the sleek hood of that Pontiac Trans Am. The far lane is Trip Shoemake. The near lane is John Force. First round of funny car action. They leave right together. John Force starting to pull ahead. John Force dominant here in this matchup at 580. 247 miles an hour. 58247 for John Ford. Ford was the number three qualifier going in. Our next pair, John Bruch Force, and he has been having quite a season. His crew chief, Larry Frazier, has made all the difference in the world for Force. He is gaining confidence in his driving abilities. He has made it to the final round several times this season, has yet to win an NHRA national event. But John Force sitting patiently as the crew completes the work on that 2,500 horsepower nitro-burning engine. The fiberglass body comes down. His competition, Sherm Gunn, already doing his burnout. And John Force rolls through the water, and next you'll see the tires smoking. John Force has consistently had the best reactions, Dave, all season long of any of the funny car drivers. An occasional red light in there uh, to mar that, but if you're not pushing the light, you don't red light once in a while, maybe you're not on time. John Force. Sherm Gunn, a chassis builder by trade, built this car specifically for this event. A brand new race car for Sherm Gunn. He qualified well and won his first round race, which probably marked his first ever win in national event competition. The burnouts are over, the engine's running up the par, and now it falls on the drivers. John Force told me recently, Dave, that he's figured out who his enemy is. It's not the other car, it's not the racetrack, it's the Christmas tree. That is the enemy, Force says. John Force, concentrating on that Christmas tree. For Sherm Gunn, he's doing exactly the same thing in the far lane of the track, and John Force with the hole shot. 
and he pulls ahead to defeat Sherm Gunn by a little over a car length, a 598 to a 604, and John Forrest, as we watch it replay, takes home the win. John Forrest with 300 of a second quicker to react. Here he loses traction, and that's going to be a sinking feeling for the driver. They can feel that happen. In the shutdown area, going back to the pit for another good hour to hour and a half worth of work for about five, almost six seconds of time out on the racetrack. Very Bodies come down on our funny cars as we get set to go into the semi-final round of competition. It'll be John Brute Forrest in the tower lane, a native Californian, a former truck driver who about 10 years ago decided he wanted to make his living in this sport, and it has been not easy for John. He has really struggled, gone through an awful lot of equipment, uh, a good businessman, as you can see, by all of the uh, logos and sponsors on his race car, and he's finally got the performance to back it all up. He'll need it because he has to race the number one qualifier, the four-time Winston World Champion in the Pepsi Challenger, Don the Snake Prudhomme. Prudhomme is only... Oh, and Don's got, got something coming out of the car. You can see there is fluid, liquid of all types coming out. He quickly shuts it off, and the car is on fire. It is the nitromethane fuel, apparently a fuel line split. Prudhomme comes out of the car, crawls away on his hands and knees, and Bob Brandt, his crew chief, quickly hitting it with a fire extinguisher. They back the car up, and no damage to either the car or Don Prudhomme, but what a break for John Force. Oh, John Force in the far lane will waltz his way into the final round. And Force smokes the tires. It's a good thing he had no opponent, David. He'd have been in real trouble. He'd have probably been defeated. He'd have been watching Don Prudhomme uh -huh. streaking away in that Pepsi Challenger, but instead, Don Prudhomme being pushed back to the pits.
as we get set for the funny cars, and here is John Ford. Neither of our funny car finalists have ever been in the NHRA Championship Winner's Circle. Not little John Lombardo here with the body being latched down, nor John Brute Force. Little John Lombardo has been racing in Southern California for nearly two decades. He is primarily a Southern California racer. He selects events out of the state to go to, but John Lombardo has his first shot ever at winning an NHRA national event. Now, John Forrest has been in three finals over his 10-year uh, career, but has yet to get the win light in that final sprint. The burnouts are over. All the work is completed. The crews directing their drivers up to that starting line marked by the yellow stripe across this very sticky asphalt. Little John Lombardo in the far lane, John Force in the near lane, and staging very carefully into those light beams. Both drivers set, and an advantage for Force, and he goes up in smoke. Now Little John goes up in smoke. It's a race to the finish line, and it is Little John Lombardo pulling it out. A tremendous race. Only a 6.32 for each driver, but times don't count. It's who gets to the finish line first. And it still takes a driver in one of these cars, no matter how sophisticated they get. They leave right together. Forrest in the near lane will be the first to lose traction there. Too much power for this racetrack. Right now, Forrest feels, I've lost. But little John Lombardo goes up in smoke. He recovers and pulls out by one car length. The victory over John Forrest. This Friday and Saturday night, the Professional Dragster Association presents the ninth annual PDA Championship at Orange County International Raceway. The P stands for professional, and the pros respectively request door slammers stay home. There's just no room for stalkers when over 200 drivers are trying to make a 240 mile per hour living. Top fuelers, more than you've ever seen in one place. Funny cars, pro stocks, pro comps, the pros, and only the pros. Qualifying Saturday, the ground begins to quake at 9 a.m. The only 32 car fuel show you'll see this year kicks off racing at 6 p.m. OCIR this Friday and Saturday night.